I propose that we start our first uh, section on empowering people with rare disease and their families. And the vision will be presented by Avril Daly. Avril is the chief executive officer of Fighting Blindness. She's also the chair of the uh, National Alliance for Rare Disease in Ireland. Uh, and she's the vice president of the board of your orders. So she's quite busy, even more so if you add that she's on the board of the European Patient Forum. Uh, and I'm sure that she does a few things more in addition. Avril. Thank you. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today to celebrate, to have uh, so many uh, stakeholders in the room uh, to hear us speak um, on behalf of the people that we represent, um, the patients. Um, when I'm asked to speak on behalf of patients with rare diseases, what their hopes and aspirations are into the future, um, I do feel a little bit intimidated by that task. Um, it's not so easy for us, I think, to talk in these terms. We're used to maybe speaking about specific issues with regard to policy and you know, taking little elements of that and, and, and trying to work through them. So when you're faced with this type of a talk, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, <laughs> I have to say, but, but one that does prov provoke your own thoughts. So for this, uh, I'm lucky to have um, people around me during the day who um, are affected by different types of rare diseases, uh, by chance actually, um, and um, I polled them and I asked them, what do they think, what do they feel, what's the first thing that comes into their minds when um, I ask uh, that question? So. Um, you want to know, you know, how their lives are going to improve over the next ten year, five to ten years? I asked them, you know, let your imagination run wild with that. Uh, one can think often that, uh, you know, what you would like to see happen in your life, you know, and to think about that. So, interestingly, these people had different types of rare diseases, but all came back with the very same point. They said, Avril, we hope that people will care. We hope that people will care about us. We hope that people will care what happens to us and what happens to our families. We are a sophisticated society. We consider ourselves to be so. A society is measured on how it responds to the vulnerable in its community, to the infirm, to those who are affected by tragedy. And interestingly, over the past couple of months, I'm sure most of you will be aware that Europe has been battered by very severe weather that's caused very severe conditions for people living all over Europe. Lives have been lost, lives have been devastated, structural damage has meant that people have lost their homes, and their entire way of life has changed. What did we do as a society? We said, well, this is unacceptable. These people need to be supported. We watched in horror at the TV programs showing us the extent of that devastation. We looked at our own communities and we saw the extent of that devastation and we said, what can we do? When can we do it? How do we do it? And who do we talk to about this? Because this, this can't happen. We have to do something. We spoke to our politicians through the media, shouty people were on TV, wagging fingers, saying something must be done. And we believed that. And something ultimately was done. And we're happy with that. And we say, OK, something is happening. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll make sure you know, that, this, that this is not just you know, lip service, that, that real, real change will happen for these people. I think when you're diagnosed with a rare disease, you're in a perfect storm. You are in a situation where you're hit by the first gust of a diagnosis. Then you have a situation where you're in the eye of that storm, and it's all of the people around you that are, that are flustered and moving very quickly to try and support you, to try to do anything that they can to make your life better. It's your family, it's the people that care for you, it's your friends, and it's your colleagues. And in the most part, for people affected by rare diseases, it is those people who will always be there. They're the experts, they're the people we rely on, and they're the people that should be celebrated on events like today. But they're also concerned about the future. And they want to ensure that they 
and we, the people who are affected by rare diseases, are prepared for that next blast, that next gust that's going to come our way. And what we have been doing as a collective and as a bunch of stakeholders over the past 20 years is preparing the way for that. And that is why we're here today, and that is the work that we're doing. We have to be able to put up our defenses and make sure that we weather the storm of a diagnosis with a rare disease and all that it entails. The other point that came back to me was the issue of clarity. Clarity, clarity. Surely at the, t at the time, in maybe five to 10 years time, in all countries there will be clear signposts of who, what, when, where, who should I speak to about these symptoms? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with my child? Where do I go for information and support? And where can I get access to the best possible therapies and treatments for me, the supports that I need? What reason in 2019 or 2024 will there be not to have these questions answered in the shortest possible time frame? And surely by then, we will be in a situation where our frontline medical professionals can, with the touch of a button, contact their counterparts thousands of miles away to consult on patients pre presented with complex conditions that don't tick all of the boxes or maybe tick too many of the boxes. Why would we not have a unique patient identifier to ensure patients do not get lost in the healthcare system? Why should we not have access to cross-border healthcare? Why in 2019 or 2024 would we not have a situation where we have a fully accredited website with information on our conditions, information provided in collaboration with all stakeholders that give us as clear and useful a picture as possible on conditions that affect us? integrated information technology that points us in the right direction, that does not scare and frighten the families that are dealing with extremely complex diagnoses, and reams and reams of information. Why in five or 10 years can we not have a well-resourced patient organizations that are linked and work together to provide support and information to the patients with rare and ultra-rare disorders, learning from each other, supporting each other? Why would we not have patient experts at the heart of all policy development to ensure that we are there to opine on what concerns us? Why would we not have a well-resourced respite centers for patients of all ages living with rare diseases, providing the best possible integrated social care and psychosocial services? Why would we not see better screening of disease better technologies and understand genetic disease and in turn the development of integrated registers of patients that provide the best information on healthcare, as well as being a resource for the development of therapies and access to trials and ultimate therapies? The answer is, there really is no reason why not. You might think this is naive of me to say, and as I've already mentioned, I think when you're looking to the future, a little naivete is important. We have to be hopeful. This is what I call hope. But what I would have outlined here today, we're already doing. We have the expertise, we have the technology, and we have, for the most part, political will. We know there is much to be done with regard to the complexities of development and of access to therapies. And here is where the tremendous work in the development of our national plans will start to really benefit us. We hope that in five to 10 years, these plans will be in their second, third, or even fourth iteration. Plans that will have been measured against outcomes and improved through the measurement of best practice models. The future can be bright, if we continue to work together in the way that we are working together across all disciplines. The future can be bright if all policy stake, um, makers understand that healthcare and medical care in the field of rare diseases offers the best value for money into the future. The future will be bright if the regulators and regulations being developed in relation to rare diseases can be transposed at the earliest possible moment. And we believe this is possible, anything is possible, and with the work that's gone on and the people in this room, I'm sure it will be so. Thank you.